I think everybody is here, ladies and gentlemen. Since we got a little bit backed into the corner on our last meeting, we should start on time. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Barry Devine, very new to this role, but I met most of you. I think I have to talk to Kelsey before. Anyhow, that's who I am, and I would declare the meeting open. And Janet, if you'd make a roll call for us. Yes. Devine? Here. Rudder? Here. Uh, Porta is here. Price? Here. Robinson Walker? Here. Stack? Here. Thompson? Yeah, here. And Lair? Here. Now, I assume you've all seen the minutes from the last meeting. Are there any additions to that or corrections that you'd like to have addressed? Hearing none, we'll declare those minutes accurate and accepted and move along here to the residence forum. And I do have one form here. Uh, is there any on uh, Zoom that we know of? I will check. Okay, last minute. Um, nobody with a hand up, so I think we're, I think it's just the person, I think okay. it's just Jane. It's Janice first anyway. Jane, the, the, the yeah. floor is yours for Should we read the instructions, report? Deborah? So we need to read the instructions first. Okay. Hit it, Janet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Residents have up to two minutes to address the committee. The committee does not directly answer questions posed by speakers during the residence forum, but it does hear the viewpoints and ideas presented, and members do not consider them as they act during the meeting. Speakers must conduct themselves with proper decorum consistent with community standards that would not be offensive to a reasonable person as determined at the sole discretion of the GRF board. Participants may not engage in personal attacks, threats of any kind, and any other disruptive behavior. Speaking violation. Speakers violating these rules may be expelled from the meeting and precluded from speaking at future meetings as determined by the board. Hearing that, uh, I would just like to say, Jane, that we did have your statement read out in your absence at the last meeting. So if you go from there. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I just um, thought I would- I need your full name and Ross for address. Jane Zellis now. Thank you. 3663 Terra Granada. So I did want to just introduce myself because I couldn't be here last meeting, um, but I did write the letter about the temperature of the hillside pool. And um, I just wanted, for those of you who I don't know, I thought you might just want to put a name in the place. Um, um, in addition, since then, I just had one other comment. Um, now that the Tice pool is closed, um, for there's only four um, lap lanes available in all of Rossmore for lap, us lap swimmers. And I was just hoping that maybe we could dedicate those four lanes to lap swimmers. Um, because uh, in talking to the lifeguard and seeing what was happening up there, I've noticed that um, People are allowed to use those lanes um, for other things. So you can just go with your needle or tread water or exercise or whatever, even when a lap swimmers are waiting. And there's other part of the pool that those that those people could use, but the lap swimmers really don't have an option. So um, you know, it's only gonna be an issue <laughs> until the end of the year. So you're probably not gonna be able to address it before your next meeting, but I just wanted to bring it to your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Nice that is noted, duly noted. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, we didn't get anybody on Zoom, did we? The last minute. No, we're good. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. So, so the chair's report is very simple. Um, like in the room. I've only been with the group one time, and there isn't anything I need to report. A lot of lots of things are going on with the construction and so on. So correspondence and announcements. Thank you. We don't have any subcommittees reporting at this point. Anything else incoming in that category? We didn't receive anything in the office. So. Okay. Moving right along. Staff reports. Which one's first? Director's report, right? Yeah, you can. Uh, it's not yes. listed separately. Yeah. It's in my other notes. Yeah. We can share. We can share. Yeah. Sure. So I'm going to run through quickly. Uh, the director's report and here's why did it start in the middle of the presentation there we go okay so a little um some kind of operational higher level updates on capital projects staffing transitions and all that kind of stuff 
And we're gonna start with staffing because um, I believe by now you've probably met our two new trainers, Terry Hummel and Nora Pilata. And so um, we're really happy that they joined us. They seem to be fitting in and bringing in some new, new skill sets, new training, um, which we've been looking for. And they're really rounding out the classes, which um, Jackie and her team have been doing a really good job, job which we'll talk about in a bit. And we also saw the departure of Emmy, who had been with us for quite a long time and she, she retired. For capital updates, we wanna talk about the capital project that's going on now. And then we'll also talk about things that are being proposed in the 2025 capital project budget. So everybody knows Tice Pool is closed um, for the roof replacement project. It is going quite well. We're on schedule. We had our 50% inspection, which is kind of like milestone inspection that the city does. Everything's going um, quite well without any hiccups. So we fully expect to reopen the pool on January 2nd. And then what we're proposing, that's odd, these little things are here. So what we're proposing uh, in 2025, um, we will be proposing to do the Tice pool resurfacing. So we had it scheduled for this calendar year. We had an issue with our vendor, so we had to cancel that contract. Um, so we're rebidding it right now. And once we get that, we'll go through the process of working um, out a date with them. Um, and of course, you want to do it when the outdoor pools are open. So, you know, we'll more on that as we get into next year. For the skylight replacement, um, this also originally was scheduled to be addressed in this year's budget. And this is one of those projects that once we started it, we realized it was a, there was a little bit more complexity to it. And so we needed to take time to do a little bit more engineering on it. Um, so we came up and really come up with a different solution that we'll be rebidding. Um, the reason why we have this hiccup is that the, the skylights that you see there are part of the original building. So when the renovation occurred, there was no need, there was no failure of the skylights or anything. So there was no real need to fix that. But doing a like for like replacement because it's such a outdated type of a uh, construction, if you will, it, it was, it was just a ridiculous cost. And then because of permitting, probably wouldn't have meet energy codes and all these other things that have come in. So, um, you know, so we regrouped and we'll be uh, tackling that project in 2025 if the board approves this. And then the other thing um, we added, which is a new project that we wanted to address is the air handler at the natatorium at Tice Pool. So, I think what people are gonna notice when they go into the pool with the new panels is that the UV coating, mm -hmm. which kind of wore off. So that, that's gonna add like a little bit of a tone to the building that should also help with like some of the heat and whatever. But there is this issue, I, I will say with circulation, certainly when it's warm, because you know we have the system where part of it is the recipe of opening and closing the roof. Um, and when the roof is closed, the air handle is supposed to be on. Well, our air handler, if you look at it, like this is our control system, it's very outdated. Like the new, more contemporary ones, not that they look as simple as a thermostat, but they're a little bit more, like you can kind of like change them with seasonality and whatnot, and with this one, you can't. So it's time for an upgrade, so we're gonna be, uh, we proposed in the next capital budget to look at that. So they'll be, ex well, we're pretty excited to try to get everything in the natatorium up to how it should be operating optimally. Okay, okay. so that's it. That's the report for now. I'm happy to answer any questions about this. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> thank you for all the work and, and the interest in getting our natatorium up to where it should yeah. be. Uh, and also, <clears throat> thank you for <clears throat> however you're managing the roof replacement in Tice Pool so that it's looking like it's going to be on schedule. It is a very big loss to many of us. Yeah. Uh, and also it adds, as you know, the closure adds to the big closure that we had earlier in 24. So I'm a little concerned or maybe almost very concerned about, about closing the pool again for uh, the resurfacing, which I understand has to happen. But I, I just, you know, I'm very uh, aware as a lap swimmer and just knowing how many other people use our pools for exercise and all of the in, in, mm -hmm. in the Tice Center, um, that we'd be very mindful about closing the pool again. And, and so as both a statement and as a question, mm -hmm. um, 
one of the questions is, does the pool also have to be closed for the ha air handler? No, okay. no, 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 Excellent. not at all. Okay, good. But the only the only thing that will impact it will be will impact or require closure is the uh, resurfacing because of course there's no water. Right. To drain the pools. Um, yeah. And that's about a month process. One month for resurfacing. It's about a one month process. Wow. Yeah. Again, um, so it sounds like if we're trying to schedule that when the outside pools are open. Yeah. Which, thank you. So mind you, it was supposed to start October this year. So yeah. we wanted to do them in October, so it was going to be this contiguous closure. Right. Yeah. So you're, we're splitting up the disruption, if you will. And so, you know, that's, you know, that's, so the, the idea is we need to find an ideal month, maybe yeah. look at the pattern of heat when we had more early closures or something yeah, like that, that would because be we want to do it when we certainly don't want to do it in April and May, right? right so it's no. really optimal, right? So we're kind of looking at the warmer months when we're going to have. Yeah, you know, that's, that that's good like, because as, that what as, meant, kind of? well, what I meant was really just to be mindful of okay. how much the pool has been closed in 24. This Tice pool yeah. center yes. has been closed in 24. So another closure, mm -hmm. you know, is, is, is really an issue and concern for many of us. And, and so, so I'm speaking for the many of us that I, I know that. are out there. Um, so uh, speaking as someone who's trying to swim in uh, at Hillside now, what I will say is it's also very cold up there. I try to swim when there's no one else there, mm -hmm. which means I'm going at six at night. Mm -hmm. And the lifeguards are there and wonderful as always. But it, you know, it's just a matter of how do we, how do you and how can we support you in juggling the needs of the swimmers along with the needs of the facilities for the swimmers. So, you know, any way I can support you, I want to do that. And, and what I'm really saying right now is to please be really mindful of the closures and the number of them. Is that okay? It, it is. And I think, you know, and we can talk, maybe next year we'll talk about like what that policy is and what triggers the closure because it isn't arbitrary, it's based on. Oh yeah, do you know what I mean? So yeah, and again, I, we're hoping we're hoping that the replacement of these panels helps a little bit with the air with the climate control, if you will. Yeah, it's a little bit difficult. It's not a conditioned space. Right, I I totally understand. So, again, really want to support you. So yeah. I'm I'm just saying, the pools are really needed, as you know, in the Thai Center for many many purposes. So yes, it affects a lot of people. Okay. Just a couple of points here from my perspective. I assume that the work on the skylight will not affect any traffic problems there. It should, and we already talked about how when we activate that, there's ways you can kind of put up. What you would do is you create an internal oh, yeah. area, which is literally walled up. Yeah. So it's not like you would rope it off, but a real physical barrier, so you can kind of go around it, and you're with you're outside of any safety zone if it was to fall through or something like that. And but we've already talked what's about what's the this. anticipated time on that. We won't know until we actually put it out to bid and understand the engineering a little bit more specifically. So the yes, more to come. I don't have any other questions, or comments, any other thoughts to be had. Okay, thank you, Anne. Let's see. Um, staff reports, subcommittee reports. Well, we're moving I think right I on. have one more. I think I have one more staff report. Why don't you go ahead? And one more staff report. So it is the Aquatics and Fitness Operations Summary Report, and I did kind of distribute a PDF so you can follow along, but I want to blow it up. So this is kind of the report we give every other month, and it talks about um, basic operational highlights, if you will. Um, I want to thank uh, Jackie. So Jackie had a little bit of a, a disruptive start to her tenure here and really has been back in focus for the last month and provided really great information based on the work she's been doing with her team um, to look at classes and add things. So we're really trying to, to engage more people. You're going to see this in the numbers. This is probably the highest number of new people we've seen come through the fitness center in the last two months. And I think a lot of it has to do with like this new team and how they're energized and really trying to try new things. I said it's one thing. I said I think you can kind of you know keep your 
consistent customer, if you will, that are loyal to that same product, but you start mixing it up and people are trying to see what's it all about there. And I think we've been really happy to see that. Um, so I'll just start with aquatics. So uh, the team has been really resilient, I think, uh, the, the staff at least, and we're trying to figure out, you know, how to, uh, you know, now move the water aerobics to dollar. And I think that's gone, you know, swimmingly, if you will. <laughs> got a little fun in there, right? Um, so it's been, it's been, everybody's been so flexible with this. So it's worth acknowledging. It's been a real shared disruption for staff and the community. And I, I, we're navigating through it pretty well. Certainly we can continue to look at things to make the- No, it seems to be working more. great. Even though we're close together, everybody's good. fine. Good, good, good. But in fitness, I think we've seen like lots of kind of uh, new energy and new activities going on. And so I don't wanna put Jackie on the spot. So I don't know if you wanna talk about it, Jackie, in a little bit of highlights or I, they're listed here, the different classes. If anybody has any questions about those, uh, what's on the horizon, you know, Jackie is, is here to talk about it. But it's nice to see that we've had some of our tenure team really kind of mix it up and try new things like the new beach volleyball. Even Joe Nash, who's never really done this kind of intro to Pilates, that was really nice, right? That she offered, like, you know, what can she do within her range of expertise that was still a new offering? And then- Yeah, like, even in, with more discussion with her too, we're also trying to figure out spatial needs for all the different equipment. Um, we're looking, we've ordered new, some new machines and we're waiting for them to come in and also push out the old ones that we're getting rid of to replace them. Um, but we're also looking at spatial arrangements for um, the classes and where we can fit more students into the classes. So we were talking with Joe Nash yeah. yesterday in her studio and like, how can we arrange this to add maybe one or two more people to each class? And because and, there's a backlog of people there too. So it's really nice to see that, that this is this constant trying to like evaluate the programs and see how can we improve them. And it really has been a, a, a great way for the team to coalesce as a team. Man, can I say something? Yeah, oh, please. I'm, you know, I, I talked to the trainers and everything and they're delighted with Jackie. They, they like the innovation and they like her listening to them and, and then responding and doing something. <laughs> so I think it's really a, really a good, you know, really good that, that happened. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the classes that Ann left was the osteoporosis fitness um, training class, and there's 25 or 30 people in there. I happen to be in it, so they're on my case um, to inquire um, whether so there would be a replacement similar to that. Yeah, we're so we're looking. At, we've tapped both of our two new trainers uh, because they have the most availability right now. Um, I think it was going to be. Nora, or it's either Nora or Terry, they're going to be trying to create a class similar to that. Um, Adam's been helped directing them in, in that class and how to make it, but it would be available to everybody, but um, but also, but more geared towards what osteoporosis needs. And, and we lost the expertise in TRX training, and so is Yes, Ash is also um, yes. getting certified in TRX to replace um, M for the time being, but um, we have to wait for her to become certified. It'll take a little bit. And then we have somebody sh just a little bit shy of their yoga certs. Yes, Nora's taking, uh, getting certified in, in yoga. So she should be offering like a, a bit of an intro to yoga class um, starting up in the new year. Uh, and then as we navigate through that, we'll be rolling out more um, more levels of yoga. So it's really cool. And it's nice that the team is, the team is like really energized and looking at the gaps and to see them going after wanting the, the certifications is really quite helpful too, especially the yoga one. That's gonna be a really great addition to have in house, which we haven't had in a while. Um, so again, this talks about the new things that were added in just the last couple of oh, months. And there's a ton of them. Yes. Is there any consideration given to more balanced classes? They're very hard to get into. There's one on Saturday, I believe, but unless you sign up at 8 a.m. the Saturday previous. Right. You know, <laughs> and there's one on Thursday, which is the same situation. Adam's also looking into his schedule to see if he can fit in one more. 
Yeah, because well, they're the, very popular. Yeah. There's so many people that have that. Is that, and is that one of the ones we're trying to move into the gym for a bigger space? The, um, so one of his classes, mm -hmm. one of his popular classes that fills every time. Yeah. Um, it involves, it's one of Bob's classes. It's, uh, I have to say the response has been overwhelming in the best of ways. Um, and so there's a real, like, so part of it is like looking at the response, see if it's sustained. And then like, we're going through the process of looking of, of all the users, right? Cause there's a lot of club use of the space. And most clubs are in spaces, which are about as the same size as they're doing the programs now. But the gym is a really good space. We're going to, we're kind of trying to look at the ones, the key classes that just people keep getting bounced out of that we can like move into space just to have, you know, to be able to serve like more than we are. Yeah. So. Like it would, moving it to the gym would add at least 15 more, yeah. more slot, slots for people that have been on the wait list for a long time. Uh, quick question. I think Carol's oh, had yeah. her hand up for a while. Are, are we going to replace M? Yes. Yes. Position yes. is it's, yeah, we have to it's recruit still that. an open position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we put out a recruitment. Um, it's only been up for a few days, okay. but so we're waiting to have a good pool, and then we'll start interviews and fix that position. Hopefully, we can get somebody who's experienced in a lot of things already. Yeah, we did add that to the to the description. We're like highly desired, <laughs> but yeah. so hopefully, knock on wood, we get somebody with that's coming with those types of certifications as well. That'd be great. Um, I missed the answer about the balance class. I, I was hearing over lunch yesterday, uh, three friends talking about how difficult it is to get into the balance class, which yeah. I think and, is and what they, yes, There used to just be one, now there's two, mm -hmm. but they're all, they're both filled right away. Right, and that's what they said, yeah. very competitive. You have to get up at whatever yeah. time and it's already filled. So I missed your answer to that because it was hard to hear. Oh, the, uh, yeah. that Adam's also looking into his schedule where he could fit in another balance class as well. And, and that we're looking at the ones that are already full where we could move them to a bigger room and a lot more capacity. Okay, that's wonderful. Thank you. At the risk of repeating myself, let me just say for those that haven't heard it before, one of my priorities in joining the group here, the advisory group, is to be able to look within our population for underserved parts of the population. We all contribute our funding, so we're the taxpayers, if you will, of what we have to offer. And one of the groups that was drawn to my attention are people with mobility problems, particularly people with walkers. Now, we have a few that I see at the gym but there's probably a lot more. And I think we need to look at creative ways to be able to attract, not just notify, but attract those people to come and do it. And of course, one of them would be to have a class that fitted that parameter. It might be within the realm of balance and so on. But, and I've seen people doing classes with, with a chair to support them and doing things around the chair. I think I saw Bob handling one of those and, and Adam too. So those kinds of things I think are, are very appropriate for us to not just serve the community that love to go to the gym, uh, a lot of lifelong habits there perhaps, but those that ha have, I know one or two, that are just too reticent to put themselves out there because of the fact that they are functioning with limited possibility and potential. But their demand and their need is, is equal to any of us, I expect. Okay. Yeah, so, I think as we. I know you're working on that, but I wanted to, Jackie right. to hear it from me personally. I appreciate that. Are there any other questions about the programs that have been implemented? If not, we can move on to the usage. Is it the water or does this come under the same? It's going to be the linger. Um, as fitness. Yeah, because fit yeah. fitness runs, they okay. run those programs. I just have a question. Is there any consideration being given to a class on Friday? And will Adam's class continue on a Tuesday, Thursday, once we're back in TICE? I, we're, we're looking into that um, in, in the usage. So um, he's taking the, all those things into consideration right now as he builds his schedule. So it may be, it may go back to Monday, Wednesday, when he gets back, when we open back up. Um, he is looking into a schedule where he could fit into another class, So, but uh, no word on what actual day that might land in. Is there no one available or is there no space for a Friday class anytime? 
Well, so I didn't, I didn't I can't, if I can't, because what we don't want to do here is build the schedule. I think it's okay. okay. No, I'm, right, just, so, I'm just, yeah, asking. and we, yeah, and we understand from the community that there was the loss of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I mean, Monday. No, but it's fine. Yeah, you know, exactly. But we are. I mean, these are things that we're constantly looking at. Okay. I can tell you right now for Adam's availability, he wasn't intending to add the Friday because he has other commitments and other new programs that he's been initiating. So what we're trying to do with the team is really like so we are. So this is another population of need, right? That is as of yet underserved yeah. or unserved. And so we're trying to figure out how inclusive can we be in the footprint that we have? And so it may take a, it may take a while to get balance and then try to figure out, okay, what are the things that are really taking off? Where do the trainers have availability? But we don't, we're not focusing on any one thing right now because we're trying to include, and again, you're gonna see this in the numbers for the fitness center, we're really trying to draw in people that are not current users. Yeah. So, but you know, but we're we're. I didn't forget you, Betty. Like we we kind of so we know that is an issue. Is what I understand. Yes. So I'll pass it on. <laughs> and I will say, and it is a kind of, and it's a very different dynamic with the cadence of classes now, because also what was happening is you had classes that didn't change for several years, and so the people knew how to sign up, and it kind of left it made it very difficult for newcomers. Well, now we have another problem because there are people that are a little bit more quick on the app to sign up than others, but we're finding ways to say, okay, but they can't sign up for more than, they can't sign up for every class that comes online. So we have ways to kind of um, govern that electronically. I mean, it's nice to kind of be a victim of the success of, oh, great, there's more, so people are coming, but we have so many different things to balance out. Um, and I think once we get kind of you know, identifying these different populations of of need of interests that we can then say, okay, so this is stabilized, and then sometimes then you can find the more efficiencies and start adding these things back. Yeah, great, thank you. Just just be just be patient with us. I, I think I just wanted to say I I agree and I support you. I think that um, right after uh, Kathleen's class, which I just took, which has a lot of eighty and near ninety year olds. Um, who are, wouldn't go to a class anywhere else. Yeah. So that's great. And after that, there's a Parkinson's class, which looks like it's pretty well it's attended. Really attended. So yeah. I think there you have um, managed to serve a lot of people who would never go to gyms before that I can see. Yeah. yeah. But I really appreciate, you know, Barry had brought that up in a conversation. It's a real, you could tell it really like speaks to you, yeah. like to try to, you know, serve people that have those mobility issues. And so, I, I mean, you don't have to wait to a meeting to say, have you considered, like just always send those, you know, shoot an email to Jackie, or, you know, Adam, Ash, whatever, just, you know, let us know what's on your mind if you see a need that isn't being served, because we really want to be reflective of the community. Um, okay, so then we're going to look at... Yep. You okay? Yep. okay. So let's get facility usage. And so, uh, so these are looking at the totals for a couple of months at a time, starting with the aquatics usage. And so this is just a summary of the total visits uh, with the highest attendance and lowest attendance and uh, the total guests. And we like to put the, the total guests and the children. And those are separate numbers, right? Which is kind of interesting. So, um, you know, these are questions. Yes, yes, yes. Guess when you say guess, are the 210 part of the 288? No, they're, they're not. Okay. Okay. So it's a pretty substantial number of all users that are that are guests and children at Hillside. And at Dollar, it's a little, it's for our local floaters, right? So it's a little bit less of a guest pool and more of like the residents. Mm -hmm. So then I do it this way. So then we have the the, uh, the daily visits, and it, you know it's not a surprise that on a on a weekend, you know especially because people will take their children to this one on a weekend we have like one of the highest, we typically have high days, high attendance. A Sunday was the highest attendance in September. Mm -hmm. Why it was midweek in October is probably a heat wave or something like that. Um, it's really interesting to see the use of pools, which kind of can go like this. And then you're gonna see at the fitness center, it's like, are, these, are we looking at the same thing? It's, it's all very interesting. But this is, that's the hillside use. And then by, certainly the times of day have more consistent patterns. And so this is the hillside 
trend for the times of day. And of course it peaks towards the uh, late afternoon. I would assume during the coup, I, I, I wonder what's gonna happen when we get November and December's numbers. It's probably like earlier because of the temperature, I would think. And then with the dollar pool visits, um, you know, I mean, the lowest day we had 21 people, which isn't, you know, which is about the same like as a hillside low day. And then the patterns are again very similar. We're all creatures of habit here at Rossmore. We know when we, we know when we want our pool time. <laughs> now for fitness, I thought this was really interesting because usually I want to say it's about it's like 200 ish more clients than we've seen for like the two month reporting periods. It's been so that was a real big change in this report. Um, Mondays are still the busiest days, and Mondays and nine o'clock a.m. Those are really the hot days and the hot times. Um, these are our personal training and orientation numbers for October and September. Um, and again, you can see uh, like the, like the total sessions there. It looks like a, let me see if I can blow it up. Is PT mean part-time? For personal, training. personal training. Oh, thank you. Sorry, I'm <laughs> stuttering. Not that. No, I, I should have known that. Yes, we let you know. So we'd like to kind of show you those. And so the lighter blue is October, and then September is the darker blue. Okay, so these are our um, total visits for the fitness center. Um, <laughs> a low daily attendance of 298. <laughs> busy. These places are busy. Um, and these tend to be a uh, very kind of, you know, consistent patterns of use as well. So, anyway, but I think you all have the copies of it. You can uh, take a look at it. But th this is the one I thought was funny because it looks like I had to look at this saying, are we looking at two different months? And these were actually two different months. They're almost identical, which I think is crazy. Mm -hmm. Even more so than the pools. Probably has and a lot to do with when classes are. I'm sure. I'm sure. So I'm wondering if we change schedules, like if that changes, or, or even some of the, you know, you have some real, um, you know, like the clubs that historically have, you know, they've been when they have all those things. So that is the report. I, if you have any more questions for Jeff, I have a question for you. Yes. yes. Um, for the fitness center, that I'm, I'm assuming that. This, these counts also reflect uh, people going into the pool. Do they? Because that's when we sign yeah. in. Yeah, we're also signing in. Yeah, we're all signing in at the same place. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Anything? Anybody going through the gate? Sorry. Anybody going through the gate? Right. The counts. Yeah. 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 I'd be interested. To, pardon me. I'd be interested to know how many clubs use the facility and which ones they are. Oh, we can we can show you that. Just for my own awareness. Absolutely. <clears throat> I think you have to take into consideration with clubs that um, the clubs are filling a need. Um, when you see a club that has 25 people in their class every time, yeah, yeah. that means that class is, it's a class that's needed. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I'm not, I'm not sure all of them allow it or like that, but certainly a lot of the clubs, um, their attendance is very high. Yeah, if you look at it, they really kind of amplify fitness instruction. Right. Yeah, right. so it's really a uh, uh, super yeah. resource. Yeah, and the GRF doesn't have to pay for it. Exactly, <laughs> saving your coupon dollars. Any other questions? So we can move forward. Uh, do you want to do your presentation, Deborah? I would love to do my presentation. <laughs> I am ready. So first up, we have the parliamentarian procedures. And why is that important? Why are parliamentarian procedures important for our committee meetings? Um, is anyone familiar with Robert's Rules of Order? Yes, everyone. <laughs> Is anybody not familiar with 
Right, no supporter. Okay, and so this is this may be some old news for you, but I think it's helpful nonetheless, maybe for those um, watching this video. So basically, the parliamentary uh, procedure was created so that um, we can run these meetings smoothly. Um, it's required by our GRF bylaws. It's to help the transaction of business. It's to make sure that we uh, promote cooperation and harmony, um, because when you have maybe cross-talking or, or that nature, this really sets in some rules and guidelines that you speak one at a time and when called upon. And this is also to ensure that all of the members have these equal rights and privileges when you're at this meeting, so that if someone is not interested in, in, in moving towards an action, they have a voice, they have a say to say no on the vote or abstain, etc. I'm sure you guys would know all about this. And, and that also ensures the majority and the minority have rights as well. So the role of the chair, um, and this is uh, Mr. Devine as well as all of the chairs, calls the meeting to order, maintains order and decorum, ensures adherence to the meeting agenda, and adjourns the meeting. Um, but there's a lot of things in between, as we know, uh, that the chair has involved. So basic decorum rules is to address the chair, use the term chair, speak only when recognized. I see you guys have had proper decorum throughout this meeting so far, raising hand, waiting to be called on. Um, and there is um, debate guidelines. So you're focusing on the single motion or action at hand or the agenda line item discussion, right? So you're talking about the fitness center, maybe skylight, and somebody wants to, to bring in hot chocolate conversation. That's really not apt for that particular discussion. And it's to focus on that one particular uh, item at a time. Respectful language only. <laughs> Uh, making motions. So we there are a million different ways to make motions through Robert's Rules of Order, but we do some basic ones where we make a, a main motion and sometimes we can amend a motion. So the main format of handling a main motion is you obtain the floor, you state your motion clearly, it requires a second always. And that's really to help facilitate whether the group as a whole wants to move forward with that motion, right? So Elizabeth, you say, I wanna have hot chocolate at the fitness center. It's silent. Nobody feels like they agree with that. So then that motion, <laughs> I'm not picking on you, but no, it's okay, we'll have hot chocolate for you. But the- She wants a mean, cocktail, it seems. And then she wants the margarita machine. One day. Yes, okay. Um, but it, it really is to clear up the room and the situation and whether they want to move on with that discussion. So once it's it's closed or fails, you move on to either another motion or a new line item. Um, and after that person has seconded the motion, then you can start having that full debate and conversation. Uh, let's see here, you can only discuss one motion at a time. So once a motion has been brought forth, there's no discussion on an alternative motion until that one's been disposed of. And then amending a motion. So I don't know if you're aware, but there's only really three options to amend a motion. You can strike out a word, you can add a word, or you can do the combination of the two. And it's not just a word, it could be a sentence, a paragraph, but really an amending of a motion, it should be germane to the subject like Elizabeth bringing up wanting hot chocolate to the fitness center, if all of a sudden Janet Corda says, well, I want an oak tree out front, right? I wanna amend the motion to remove the hot chocolate and add an oak tree. That's no longer germane, right? No, okay, everyone's getting the picture, okay. And again, requires a second to make sure everyone is in agreement that they wanna amend that main motion. Common mistakes is someone says, you know what, I really think that we need to add this hot chocolate to the fitness center and, you know, someone screams out, so moved, and then you move on. 
that that can't that's not calling the action in clarity right for janet the secretary going what was the motion what's happening who made the motion who was seconded so just be cognizant of that so be clear to say i move that and restate the motion clearly um typical meeting uh, uh order of business now you can always shift these items uh, the chair and the committee can agree to say, okay, so here is our standard agenda, right? You call the meeting to order, you approve the minutes, there's the residents forum, the reports of staff or committees, unfinished new business, and then you adjourn. However, due to lack of time or um, lack of favor or due to favor of a certain line item, you can move uh, to go to the next item. So say um, Chair Devine says, you know, Anne needs to leave in 20 minutes. Let's get her line items out of the way so that she can go and we can discuss business afterwards. Let's move to that line item and jump the agenda for that. So that's completely doable. So why is it important to publish the committee agendas and adhere to agenda item requirements? So to ensure with the compliance, this is all the, the very legal stuff, why we have agendas, why we post them to the public beforehand so that it's for the public's review as well as the committee's review. Because if you show up to the meeting not really knowing what's on the agenda, how can you prepare yourself, right? How can the public prepare themselves for the residence forum? So in our bylaws, legal standards, corporations code, the Brown Act, there has to be a publication of not only the content of the agendas, but beforehand, at least 72 hours or greater than. So GRF policies, we have several in relation to these advanced notice of meetings. These are on our website. This is in the packet. So we've got policy 201.2 advanced notice of meetings. This is really to um, give that public an understanding of what this committee is speaking to, as well as its members. And then open committee meetings. This is really to make sure that a summary of all the agenda items are made public so that you're not having a serial meeting behind doors discussing matters that are not publicly um, accessible to everyone because holding that um, behind closed doors is um, illegal. It's not legal. Corporations code. So again, it's just another outlet that we follow that really is important that promotes transparency and accountability to governance. The Brown Act as well, same thing, makes sure that the notices are accessible and everyone is noticed. Reference rules of order, same thing. Bylaws, same things. So handling business not on the agenda. So in our meeting today, if there is no further business on the meeting agenda, you cannot discuss anything. So we have a strict agenda adherence. So items not on the agenda cannot be discussed. Um, however, I see you have a line item, items for consideration and future agendas. Brilliant. Because really that's all you can do after you've covered all your action items is now you can decide what you'd like to have on the next meeting agenda for discussion. It's not a time to deliberate because the public hasn't been forewarned about your important topic. We wanna to be able to invite that public to come and join in on that discussion and transparency of that discussion. So if there's no further agenda items uh, listed, they've already been discussed. The only other item that you can discuss is the next meeting. Um, and or if you didn't have any business to, in the first place, no new business or unfinished business, all you can deliberate is that, what do you want to add on the next agenda, right? Um, or you can say, oh, we don't have any business, let's cancel the meeting. The committee didn't bring up anything during the agenda formation process. Two weeks prior to the publication of the agenda, let's cancel the meeting, right? So that's a basic format of parliamentary <laughs> procedures and agenda adherence. I know, exciting. If anyone has any questions, <laughs> very good. Thank you. <laughs> All right, next up, we've got your charter, which is amazing. <laughs> now, before we, before we get into that, if I may, <clears throat> I'm not a great supporter of rigidity, 
Um, but I think we need to remind ourselves that, that it's important and these regulations and format structure gives us a, a greater amount of transparency. And this is particularly underlined because people, members of our community, have the right to watch it on Zoom. And they need to know what to expect and what to anticipate and understand that there's a format that once they plug into it, it'll be very clear to them and transparent. Right. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. So next up, and I'm pretty sure Anne has already shown you your charter. Yes. But <laughs> I think this is really going to focus you, especially with this next line item on your future agenda. So start thinking. While I'm, I'm talking, just start thinking about what you want to discuss for your next meeting, and you can bring it up for your next item. It's a wonderful brainstorming exercise. So these are your responsibilities as the Aquatics and Fitness Advisory Committee. So you are advisory to the Golden Rain Board, the nine directors. You evaluate JIRA fitness and aquatic facilities programs and equipment to provide a safe and enjoyable environment in view of current and projected usage. You strive for a broad mix of programs, services, and equipment to meet the various needs and lifestyles of the residents. You monitor guest and caregiver usage of fitness aquatic facilities. You make recommendations regarding guest use policies and rules. You assist Rossmark clubs and organizations in utilizing GRF fitness and aquatic facilities. You publicize available programs, services, and equipment. Additionally, you evaluate annual budgets, including revenue generating proposals, review rules and guidelines for use of GRF fitness and aquatic facilities and recommend amendments to the policy committee. So that's your sister committee. And anytime that you see you're reading those rules and guidelines and you bring them up to the meeting, bring them up to Ann Tola Barry Devine, and you say, look, I, I think this needs to be modified because X, Y, and C, let's talk about it. And let's and during your deliberation, you can make a recommendation to the policy committee. And then they review it, and then they take it to the GRF board for some reviews as well. Uh, you address user concerns about GRF fitness, aquatic facilities, equipments, and programs. You serve in an advisory capacity for capital improvement projects at the request of the board. And you review the statistics that you just reviewed for the uh, director's report of fitness, um, attendance reports you were just doing. And you document facility visits and forward them onto the GRF board. They receive them every month that you meet in their agenda packet. And the chair, Barry Devine, reports out the general overview of what transpired during your meetings to the board. They do receive a, a, your report, your minutes, uh, and your statistics that were included. Um, but that's really helped for them as well to be cognizant of what's going on in the fitness center and aquatics. So why are we following the charter? Right. So this it's important because it gives us foundation, your foundation of meeting today, meeting two months from now. Your, it gives you your purpose, your scope, your authority, and the procedures on how to proceed with what your purpose is. And with anything that I have to bring up, it's always the Brown Act Corporations Code. Um, it's always good to follow that charter because that's uh, giving you that authority and the parameters of what you can discuss during your meetings. Maintaining consistency and compliance. So this really ensures all committee activities align with those established regulations within your charter. It promotes transparency and accountability. So if someone wants to know what happens um, at these meetings or if another member is interested in joining your committee, they can just look at the charter and go, okay, this is what I need to know. This is what the scope of the committee is gonna discuss during its meeting and I know I can do that. It facilitates orderly and efficient meetings, enhances everyone's trust and participation. So following this charter will help you maintain consistency and adherence to legal standards, ensuring the committee operates within its defined scope and authority and if you have any questions at all on any of these topics, I'd be happy to answer. Anybody have any questions or clarifications necessary? Thank you, Deborah. Nice welcome. presentation. That's why there was no questions. Uh, thank, thank you. you. That was very thorough. <laughs> yeah. Yes. 
<clears throat> well, looking back at our agenda, I don't think we have any unfinished business that I'm aware of, but maybe there are some others that preceded me or my more memory. Hearing none, we can move further on and uh, discuss any new business. And of course, this should be done Carol, very briefly. Oh, I missed, oh, we're on the same line here. I could. Yeah. Um, we didn't have, we didn't address publicity. Is there no um, report on publicity? That was number eight. Maybe not, but I just was curious. Well, it's a good point. Um, there, there were some things that, that were new with the new hirees and so on. And, and there was talk about us putting a notice down there which gives our emails and makes a little statement about we're a vehicle that you can report concerns or ideas or frustrations so that we can then filter them and bring them to the staff. Um, at this point, nobody knows who we are as a committee well, there's or, what, a, or what we do, for the most part. There's actually a publicity committee. Is that you, Mary? <laughs> who did the publicity? Who was doing the wall of fame? Oh, me. I didn't yes, know it was yeah. called publicity. I'm yeah, sorry. That's okay. just, that's, yeah. No, no so I knew that. A, oh, I didn't know. That that specific that. thing, because we talked because about she, it briefly last week. Yeah. Do you need to report on that particularly? No. Um, I, I just tried some different things, you know, trying um, Qigong and just trying to do some different things that we offer, you know, people from the So that's what you're right. for running? Okay. So I'm going to okay. well, maybe ask Adam after a while. <laughs> sorry. Make sure we didn't recommend. You I didn't want to steal your thunder, Marilyn. No, no, no. <laughs> no. I'm trying to just expose, you know, like having those article about Joe's class and then her free introductions and just trying to introduce yeah. different things. Yes. Yes. I just wanted to welcome our new committee member. Yes. Betty. Oh, that's yes, right. Thank you. Really yes. <laughs> Thank you. You were significant by your absence on the previous meeting. Of course, <laughs> sorry. You sure. I was greatly you missed. To, you know who we are. Yes. Okay. Well, then moving along, um, we are at the area where we talk about future agendas. It was referred to a couple of times today. I'm not sure what you might have in mind there. So the floor's open. If you would like to raise anything that is on your mind, or we haven't mentioned it or addressed it today. I can bring back a report for clubs. But the, oh, that's right. You did request that, so I'll make sure yeah. that's You said you'd do it, so yeah. that's great. I'll make sure that gets in there. Okay, and so we're coming up to a closure here already. Well, I need to announce that our next meeting is not until next year. <laughs> January 9th would be the proposed date. So you might like to make a note of that. 2025. Uh, and so with that, I'm going to declare the meeting adjourned. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your participation today, constructive participation. Um, the, so our next board meeting is December. Yeah. Is that right? So January. I'll send you an email meeting. because the schedule changes because yeah. of the holidays. Yeah. Just so. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I um, thought it would be January. Yeah.